Ah, yum, yum, yum. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Woohoo! The weekend tomorrow. Okay, so I'm just going to scrub all this stuff off. Well, not all of it, but a uh, bunch of it. Because then we can use this as like a little bit of revision. Go back over kind of what we covered on Wednesday. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Let's get the chat up so I can see if anyone has any questions. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, so three point crosses, bunch of fun. I actually really enjoy uh, doing these because they're like little logic puzzles. I probably don't know whether I told you or not, but I really suck at crosswords, but I really enjoy this stuff. So, Peyton plan for success. Can anybody remember what the first step is? Can I grab my coffee? What is the first step whenever you get confronted like in dark alley by a, yes, three point cross. So what's the sign of linkage? I mean, that's a good point. An excess of what? Hey, excess of parentals. So out of these groups, which are the parentals? Yeah, the top group. The reason why I spend a bunch of time going over this, yeah, thank you, uh, as I am Bianca as well, correct, is because A, it's uh, hard to get, but easy to do once you know how to do it. B, practice makes perfect, right? And you'll be getting at least four, maybe more, probably about six or seven questions on linkage, at least in the exam, including one of these, right? So I want to make sure that you're well practiced and you understand it. So, so you find parentals and what else? What other group do you need to find? Well, all of these, because they're, that's correct, uh, Caitlin. Yeah, all of these are recombinants. What you need to find is what Stephanie and Bian uh, Brianna sorry, uh, said is the double crossovers because those are the rarest. So the rarest group here is which group? Yeah, it's the third group. You're basically looking for the fewest. So these are the double crossovers right and a lot of the work in a three-point cross is at the beginning right because after that it becomes a lot more straightforward right so we need to find parentals and double crossovers the reason we need to find the parentals it's easy is because this gives us what combinations of alleles we have and what chromosomes ah here's a question for class what linkage phase do we have going on here in the parentals? A little bit of revision. Cis or trans? Cis, yeah. Cis as in same is the easiest way to remember it. So they have the same dominant, dominant, dominant. The other chromosome has the same recessive, 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 right? And so we need to know this because what we're looking at the double recombinants for, do we want to find out which allele moves, right? And so in these doubles, which is the allele? Because you're only going to see in all of these one allele change, right? Which allele is moving 
out of these. If the originals are plus, 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 and A, B, C, which letter changes? It's the C. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, that's, here's a dad joke for you. What's Pirate's favorite letter? No, it's the C. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, that makes me joke. <laughs> my, uh, my youngest gave me a funny dad joke, just kind of off on a tangent. And this is a dad joke about a dad joke. So when is a dad joke a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. I think that's fabulous. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I know that's like the, oh, the absolute pinnacle of dad jokes, I think. Anyway, back to this stuff. This is the, the one that, <laughs> that's really cool now. Actually, my dad sends my kid, my dad sends my kids, his grandkids dad jokes as well by email, uh, which is really funny. It's like how they keep in touch. Um, anyway. C is moving. And so the only letter that moves in a double crossover is the middle one, right? Because mm -mm, if we have right, I'm not showing the non recombinant parentals which are going to be on the outside right so just assume that they're there what you get with a double crossover is this is that got the C here. So if this gene order was correct, the one that I've given you here, then B would be the letter that's moving, the allele that's moving. Just notice my eyebrows are particularly boopy today. Anyway, my wife keeps threatening to pluck them while I'm sleeping. I was like, yeah, good luck with that. So this gene order cannot be correct. It has to be that. Now, I mean, I've tried plucking my eyebrows. It really hurts. You know, they're dug in there pretty solid. So that's why we need both the parentals and the double crossovers. Parentals tell us the original combination of alleles, right? What we have on each chromosome. The double crossovers tell us which one is moving. So the third, second step is work out gene order. Basically, the letter that moves and the double crossovers is in the middle, right, Malcolm in the middle. So the correct order is A, C, B, or B, C, A. In this case, it doesn't matter, but it's easier to kind of stick with more or less what we've got on the board. Okay. I want to stop for a second, A, because I want to have some coffee, and B, because I want people to think about this and make sure they understand how you get the gene order. Okay, anybody have questions?
Nope. Cool. Well, if you do, just stop me. Right. That's why I'm here for. So, three, and this was actually brought up by a student yesterday, which I think is pretty cool. You don't have to do this, but if it helps you, do so, right? Reorder the letters here. It'll make it a lot easier to figure out what's going on. So, and this is the plus of having a whiteboard. And hang on, pardon me. There you go. All right, so now we've put all of this in the correct order. And the reason why I did that is it just makes things a little easier, right? little less confusing. You don't actually have to do that. I mean, quite often I don't uh, because I can figure out what it is I'm looking at, but this is inherently not something that's super easy to get. So doing stuff that makes your life easier is going to be a kind of better way of making sure you're successful. I'm just going to take a picture and then I'll move on to the next part of the plan for success. All right. So now it's just a simple matter of working out recombination frequency. And there's only one little wrinkle here, right? That you have to pay real close attention to. What, what number are we on? I think four is the next one, right? I can never remember exactly how many numbers are in my plan. It's an evolving plan. There you go. But it is patented. So don't try and copy this, right? Because patented. So anyway. Work out recombination frequency. And so we're going to do this for each pair separately. right? And so the wrinkle here is that these are single recombinants, right? So no, damn it, purple's gone. Let's find a different color. Ha ha ha, pink. Wow, that is a lurid pink. So, A to C single crossover. Now, the wrinkle here is that you have crossover event between A and C here, right? To generate these, actually, it's here generates these single recombinants and these double recombinants. So if you remember what I said in class on Wednesday, they're doing a bunch of double crossovers or two point crossovers underestimates genetic distance. 
right? Because it doesn't take into account double crossovers. This is why we're doing it this way, right? And so even though this double crossover results in a different allele combination, right, to this one, it is still the result of a crossover occurring between A and C. And one between C and B, but we don't care about for this calculation, but we do care about this one. So if you want a complete picture of recombination, you need to add both of these together. And so recombination frequency is number of single crossovers plus number of double crossovers divided by total progeny. And all of that times 100 get into a percent. So for A to C, that is these two added together, which is oh, 157, no, 257. And these two added together, which is 27. That's a little bit easier to add together. Now I'm going to rely on you lot because my, I guess I could probably add that together, but I'd rather not. Um, someone add this together for me. It would just take me too long to do it longhand. Total of everything. Because recombination frequency is a percent of the total that are recombinants. That looks about right. But else got that? Not saying that you're wrong, Melody, but it doesn't hurt to double check. Awesome. So two, three, three, four. So back to this. Which is at sixty-four, eighty-four. I don't know what that is. Probably something around thirteen percent, maybe, as a guess. I'll let someone else work it out. What's the answer to this? No, oh, that wasn't a bad guess, was it? So that's 12.17%. And percent is the same as distance in centimorgans. Cool. Thank you too, Daniel. So that's how you work out recombination frequency. Now we're going to have to do that the same for C to B. So let me take a picture, rub that off, and we'll do the same for the other one. Ah, oh, well, too late. Learn that for multitasking, drinking coffee and erasing the whiteboard at the same time. Okay, so uh, what other color? We've got blue. Stick that down for a second. Ah, oh, no, we can't use blue. Let me get another color, see what I've got in my bag of amazing colors. Got orange, but that kind of sucks for seeing on the whiteboard. Huh. Do have another purple though. You can see my collection of coffee mugs. 
Rural Britannia. Forever drinking tea. Da, 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 Something like that. All right, so these are BC single crossovers. And you know they're BC because this is what's changing here, right? So the original wild type chromosome was plus, plus, plus. Recessive chromosome was ACB. The ones that have moved are the ones at the end, right? So this is crossovers between C and B. And so now you just do the same deal again. Now we have, uh, make sure I'm pointing the camera the right things. Different set of numbers, that is 159, I think. Yep. Plus 27 over the same total. Okay, what do we get for that? Ooh, Daniel, you're fast. All right. Anybody else just double check the math? Agreed. Good stuff. Thank you. So that is 7.97 centimorgans. And then the final step, cool, thank you, Melody, is draw a map. And so A, C, uh, about like that, I guess, roughly speaking. That was 12 point, is it 17? Oh, yeah, it's just there in the chat. And 7.97 centimorgans. And that's it. Have a think. Got any questions? Then we'll do a practice. All right. Crystal clear or clear as mud? What's the verdict? Okay, so I'm gonna do a practice. And part of the reason for doing a practice is because it, this stuff can make a lot of sense when we're doing it all together. But then when we do it, when you do it on your own, things are a lot harder. Slightly muddy crystal. Oh, that's not so bad. Okay, so hopefully, Armando, things will kind of either pop into place or... Didn't I take a picture? I thought I took a picture. Let me double check. If I don't, I'll just have to draw it out after class. Yeah, I took a picture. Whew, had me worried for a moment, Kaylee. Slight heart palpitation. <laughs> Sometimes I do forget, and then I just have to go and draw it all back again and take a picture so I can post it. All right, so let's use an example which is close to my own heart, so to speak. But this is actually something that uh, I use in the lab, right? So this is one of the essentially combinations of things. Oh, actually, no, that wouldn't work. Let's use one from Drosophila. I think I can about get the numbers right. So now we're gonna do 
Another three point cross. And bum, 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 bum. All right, so we're going to be using uh, white and yellow, which you're going to be, which is what you're working on in lab. Uh, most of you have set up your crosses. There's actually, yeah, all of you should have set up your crosses, which, by the way, are working fabulously. Right, so all of the kind of tweaks that we've been doing in lab to stop killing our flies, at least when we don't want to seem to be working. So a lot of the vials, not all of them, but a lot of them have happy flies that are, you know, flying around mating with each other. So that's really cool. I'm very happy about that. Okay, so I'm going to try and get the numbers right. Uh, this kind of mental math I'm not very good at. Uh, but let's see what we can do. Came out about right uh, last time. White and yellow, that will be, give me a second. So 10, 250, 25. Oh, that's not very many. Hang on. Sorry, give me just a second. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah, the one that we did in spring, um, Snowmageddon, basically, in the power going out, killed all of the flies, every single one in every single vial, even the stock vials. And I was like, that really sucked. And then other semesters, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. It was always a bit of a hit and miss. So hopefully we've got it figured out this semester. Okay. Uh, to, uh, 25,000, so that's 2,500, 20, 250, that'd be 125. So 61 and 60, 60, we're going to need small numbers here. And can't remember exactly how many are between these two. So let's say, I think these are a bit further. So I'm trying to work out actually, because I know the genetic distance for white and yellow, and I used to know the genetic distance for yellow and DM, which stands for diminutive males. They're even smaller than normal, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, this will do. Okay. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to sit down, because my legs ache, and... Let me just turn the lights down a bit so we get that perfection. Yeah, you can see that pretty well. Everybody see that okay? All right, so I'm going to give you 10 minutes and then we'll go through it, okay? Remember, the pace is planned for three point success. And I'll keep my eyes on the chat if you have any questions as we go through it and then we can work that out. Just realize you're not going to be able to hear a word I'm saying. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, going to give you 10 minutes. So we'll go through this at, I don't know, 9.40, unless you finish earlier. And if you have any questions, I'm going to keep my eyes on the chat or my ears open and help you work through it. There's also a couple of, at least one, I think maybe two, can't remember off the top of my head, uh, examples in the PowerPoint that you can work through as well. And I suggest you do, because obviously the more times you do it, the quicker you'll be. All right, so have at it.
Okay, how are people doing? Anybody finished up? Okay. We'll give probably another minute or so for others to do so, just in case they haven't done it already. Uh, to be honest, Stephanie, I think one significant figure is usually fine. Uh, I don't know. It kind of depends. It also depends as well on uh, the significant figures aspect too. So, you know, if you're looking at something that is less than 1%, then you probably want two decimal places for sure. Uh, if it's, you know, above 10%, then it's less important, but that's that's just a kind of a relative deal. No hard and fast rules, to be honest. If I want something specific, I'll tell you. All right, so. Do just gonna put the lights back on. Oh. That'll do. Okay, so first step: which are the parentals and which are the double crossovers? Parentals should be pretty obvious, right? All right, which ones are the parentals? Top ones, thank you. Double crossovers. Bottom ones. Oh yeah, nice job there, as I. Oh, actually, plus plus DM. No, these are not double crossovers. Because that's all right. Nice work on the the alleles though. But yeah, these ones are the double crossovers. Again, don't assume anything about where things are or gene order. Right? You have to work all of this out empirically from the data that you're given. Okay, so what is the gene order? Which allele is moving in the double crossovers? It's always the, the middle one, but is the middle one that's moving the one that's in the middle in the gene order? Yes. Right, so in this case, the gene order that you're given is correct, right? This is the gene order. Again, never assume that. Okay. Now, combination frequency between white and yellow is... <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to trick anyone here. That's, that's, I want to be really clear about that. Um, I just want you to make sure that you understand that you have to work from the data. Okay, let's go through the, the work in Stephanie. So what do we have for numbers? So we want, these are single recombinants between Y and W, because 
W is the one that's moving. So that's 121 plus five. Ooh. You are a much faster typer than I am a uh, writer, that's for sure. Two, five, oops. <laughs> Times 100 equals 0.495 centimorgans. It's all the zombie typing games. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Is that zombie like move here and you have to like type out a command to get the zombie to go somewhere? Or you have to type like a zombie. Oh. Ah, it's going, okay. I have to check that out. It's like, is that what all the everybody that needs how to learn how to touch type does? Oh. Damn. That's cool. All right. Anyway. <laughs> the things I learned teaching genetics are amazing. All right. Anyway. Moving on. Now we need to, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, me too. Well, I typed, I typed the right phrase. I just misspell it. Now, next ones. Yellow DM. And that is. Oh, that's going to be like 533, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. And five. Right, so again, these two added together, plus these two added together over the total. And what do we get for, you know, it's funny. I was actually just thinking, I wonder if she'll type that out before I even finish asking for it. And there you go. You did. Stunning. So I'm just going to round that up to 2.12. <laughs> no, it's fine. So actually, this is really cool because today I did manage to get it about right. These two genes, white and yellow, are actually about 0.5 centimorgans apart, I think, from memory. Can't remember exactly distance between these two, but it's further. Okay, and so the last step is to draw yourself a map. Uh, 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 about there. Give or take, you don't have to be. Um, Keanu, to be honest, if I wanted a specific a uh, number of decimal places, I'll tell you. One or two is fine. With real small numbers, maybe three, particularly if when you round it, that would round up to 0.5, for example. Uh, wouldn't stress too much about it, to be honest. So this is 0.495 and this is 2.12 centimorgans. And that there is how you do a three point cross. Let me just take a picture of that before I forget. So without doubt, because remember in the exams, you will be time limited, All right? We're gonna have 40 questions again, just as uh, we did in the first exam. And you will be doing at least one of these, right? Three point crosses. So the more practice you get, the quicker you will be and the more likely you will be correct.
Pardon me. Now, the cool thing about these is, is that if you follow those rules, you know, my pasted plan for success, you'll get the right answer, guaranteed, right? And obviously add the right things together. So if you do kind of put the work in to understand and practice this, it's almost like guaranteed points in your exam. If you don't, you'll get to the exam and you're like, oh, shit, right? And you might spend too much time on it and won't have time to do other questions or you'll skip it because you don't want to spend time on it or you don't understand it, stuff like that. So practice this and your life will be much easier when it comes to the exam. Does anybody have any questions about this stuff? Just see if there's anything else in. All right, so just ever so quickly, I'm not going to let you go quite yet. <laughs> One thing that I do need to point out is that there's usually a correlation between uh, recombination frequency and physical distance, right? However, that only holds on the arms of the chromosomes, right? So only at the in the essentially the the bulk of the arms between the very tips and the center where the centromere is are euchromatin, so they're kind of not super bound up, and you'll get um, recombination near the center of the chromosome and in Y chromosomes, obviously, you will not, right? So the actual physical distance kind of goes out the window or the correlation between linkage and physical distance goes out the window when you look at the center of the chromosome. Okay, so by and large, it holds true that recombination frequency equals physical distance, but it kind of falls to pieces around the center because there isn't much recombination that goes on in around the centromere. And that's pretty much it. So that's it done for linkage. I know we spent a lot of time on it, but it's something that's worth going through carefully so that you get it. Because I like it when students get it, because that's cool. It means you learn something solid and you can use it. And then uh on Monday, we will rip through this PowerPoint and get on to uh, DNA replication, right? Because we've got a bunch of stuff we've got to finish before the exam, which is when? When B exam? All right, that'll be in a bit less than two weeks' time, October the 13th. All right. Might end up pushing that back. We will have to see. We'll have to see how we get through all this uh, rest stuff. Even though we have a we have a catch up day here, so fingers crossed we'll be okay. Oh yeah, totally, Nadia. Who doesn't want to see dad jokes? Oh, what's your favorite dad joke? See if I can torment my kids with it. Wait, I'm all excited now. Why did the melon want to go swimming? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yes. What an awesome way to end the class on a Friday. Thank you for that. That is beautiful. All right, I shall. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll wait till everybody's sitting down at dinner tonight, and I'll uh, I'll bring that one out. Anyway, thanks very much, everybody. Uh, see you all on Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Bye all.